was forgiven a lot by the Lord. And I, I yeah, and I, I've talked to a lot of people, you know, you know, about Jesus and stuff like that. And when I go out and evangelize, and there are some people who say, man, God can't forgive me. I, I've, I've done so, so many evil things. I'm like, listen, God can forgive all of your sins. No matter what you've done, God can forgive you. God can forgive the worst of sinners. And um, that's pretty much, you know, what you experienced, right, Carlos? Uh, yeah, won't you won't you share um just go way back to the beginning. Share share your, your story, Mac. I think your story is fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks God. You know, um okay, I wanna go back to, to the beginning is uh, is the is the best way to start. Uh, I am from Venezuela, uh, that's the reason I have an accent, but I live now six years in Canada, in Montreal. Um since the age of five, so when I was really a, a little kid, I was sexually molested uh, by a guy, by some guys, in fact. It was not just one person, it was uh, some uh, five people around. And I was sexually molested since I was five to 12. Uh, I didn't know what it was because it wasn't violent you know it was more like what it's called today grooming is like the person gained your your trust and then after that they start doing things you know so i was confused because i liked what i was experiencing but i didn't know they didn't have the right to to do what they were doing so uh, somehow these experiences developing me as hypersexuality. I was so sexualized since the uh, such a little age and I didn't understand why. So at the age of 12, I remember I was experiencing uh, bullying. I was experiencing many, many uh, discrimination, I would say, and I didn't understand why. Uh, my f parents were divorced. My father uh, used to reject me at the time because he saw I was effeminate. Um, I didn't know why I was effeminate. I didn't know why I acted somehow like like a girl in many times. And one day, I remember, because of a bad experience with my dad, I, I, I said into my mind, okay, you think I'm gay, so I'm going to be the most gay ever. You, you you ever met and I remember after that I I could be able to see into guys eyes into the other guys eyes and to recognize that they liked men as me because at the time I was already feeling attracted to men so at the age of 12 I started having such a promiscuous life and not longer after that at 15 I was already into prostitution I didn't understand why it was so easy for me to, to, to watch, to see a guy immediately know he was gay. And he immediately connect even without words. You know, it was, it was spiritual, but I thought it was a superpower. So I was, I was taking advantage of this. And at the time, I remember also that I was addicted to pornography. I was addicted to masturbation, to, um, to uh, also, I had so many societal thoughts all the time, all the time. I wanted to die, I wanted to die. Uh, until one day at the age of 16, I decided to speak with my family because I wanted to protect the, the little ones in the family from the abusers that once uh, uh, molested me. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I, I said to them what happened to me. But uh, I also s said to them, I want you to to accept that I am gay. Uh, I remember my mom, she asked me for to forgive her because she didn't realize anything that happened to me. She, she, she asked me to forgive her, but also she told me, Carlos, I would like to ask you, if you were never being sexually abused, would you be gay? Would you consider yourself gay? I have never made this question to myself. I thought I was born that way. And and I I I thought I just had to accept myself. So but this question, you know, was a question I didn't have an answer, 
but I accepted that question. I, I said, well, I'm not sure if, if, if this didn't happen to me, if I wasn't sexually exposed to sex with guys so many hundred times since I was five, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I would be gay, even though people said that I was, that you are born this way or whatever they say, yeah. this question to myself was uh, big enough. And so I, I remember that after a few months, I started going to the psychologist. My mom wanted to help me not to change, but more just to deal with the fact that I was sexually abused and all the mess that it can uh, produce in your life. And I remember the psychologist told me, Carlos, uh, it would be interesting that, that your life doesn't become the result of what somebody else decided when you were a kid. Um, I don't know if you're going to be gay or not, but it would be nice that you can decide uh, based on, on yourself and not based into the exposures that you receive from other people's will. So I remember that I really liked it that. That, that she said that I wasn't guilty of being sexually molested because I thought I was guilty, and that she said that I could decide a new life that, that doesn't come from that experience. So being atheist, because at the time I, I didn't believe in God, uh, I, I decided that I wanted to change, that I didn't, I didn't want to be gay. <laughs> At the time, I remember also I was active in the in the gay lifestyle. I was going to discos and all the the clubs, and and I really enjoyed it because I felt accepted somehow. You know, it was people who feel as I was feeling, who think, who used to think as I was thinking. So I felt accepted. And but this question of if you weren't being sexually abused, would you be gay? You know, it was so deep that I couldn't stop thinking of this. So I decided to change. I decided uh, at the age of 16, I decided to change. I started going to the psychologist. I asked her to help me, help me change because I don't want to be gay anymore. So I, I would say that everything she helped me with, it was not to change. It was more to, to heal all the bless, all the, the wounds that I had in my heart. Mm -hmm. But more I wanted to change the words it was. And I remember I wanted to, to date girls just to, because I thought the opposite from homosexuality was heterosexuality. So I wanted to date a girl so that I, I would help me to change. And I remember while I was dating her, it was even worse because I forced me to be sexually with her. And while it, we being with her, I was thinking on guys. And at the same time, at the same time, when I when I uh, cheat on her with guys, I used to think of the question that my may, my mom made to me. You know, if you would be if you wouldn't be sexually abused, would you be here? So it was even more um, uh, tormenting, you know, because I had even more uh, desires to commit suicide because I wasn't. I was addicted to sex, but I couldn't be peace. I couldn't be in peace with girls or with guys. I remember at the time it was in 2004. I went to the movies for the first time and I saw the film The Passion of the Christ. Mm. I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know anything about Christ. I thought that The Passion of the Christ was about Jesus being attracted to many women because he was passion. I thought he was passionate <laughs> for women. <laughs> <laughs> because it was the only meaning I, I had about passion. So I didn't understand, he didn't know nothing, it was crazy. Even if I come from a from a Catholic background, in the Catholicism it was everything about saints and, and holy people, but it was never about Jesus. So I didn't know that much about Jesus. And and at the time as I told you I was atheist. So I don't know how can I explain this, but I understood in that film that he did that for me, that he did die for me, and that he wanted to give me a new beginning. So I said, like, I want that. I want to accept that. I want that new beginning. I want the new life. And he died for me, and and he forgave me, and so I want to accept that. And I remember a few days later, I was talking with a lady, and it was the first time somebody told me it was a it was true that what I saw in the film, it really happened, that it, it happened 2,000 years ago. 
So I was fascinated by the fact that he was forgiving my everything I've done. And at the time, it was a lot to me because I am like doing a short story, a long story short. But the thing is that I wanted to follow him. Uh, my bad because I went to a church that was so legalistic and they just encouraged me to change. They encouraged me, encouraged me to fight against my, my sins. And you know what, uh, Jamal, the most I fought against my sins, the worse it was. It's like, it's like Paul says that sin, um, take the law to manifest it. The power of the sin is in the law. So the more I knew what the Bible says about homosexuality, the worse uh, my sexual desires manifested. Um, and at the time, I would say it was more than a homosexuality. I call it that undesired homosexuality because I didn't want it. So the most I wanted to fight, the worse it was. And my life, my sinful life, in church was worse than what I have experienced before knowing about Jesus and church. So it's like I was in a level of sin that was deeper and bigger than what I was uh, experiencing before. But I just understood that I had to fight. I had to fight. I had to fight. And I stayed like that some years. I tried to other relationship with other girls. I just broke their hearts because it was... I, I thought it was my, my solution. And, and I wanted to change so much. I did many uh, uh, programs, you know, programs to help people come out of the gay lifestyle and all that stuff. And they were so focused in changing that it just added more and more to my obsession of changing. So I remember after a while, I, I quit the church I, and... and in 2007, my sister, who I was really attached to, she had a, a car accident and she passed away. So I was so mad at God because he didn't protect her that I just leave church and I wanted to die. And I wanted to, to um, just to just to be mad at him and to make him mad. You know, it's like I was so rebel, rebel and... And I remember I just wanted to die. And in that period, I met a guy. And with this guy, I, I started a relationship. And it was the first time I started a relationship that, that, that long. And even though we both went to church and he wanted to change also, and we wanted to stop the relationship, we lasted for seven years. <laughs> so it was like deeper and going down against what, what the Bible says, but I couldn't control it, I couldn't stop it, I couldn't change it, I couldn't do nothing. Uh, at the time, I remember I, I said, well, I won't be happy in any way, so I, I'm going to make money. Maybe money is going to help and then to be happy. <laughs> yeah. And I made money, and it was good, but it wasn't happiness neither. So I didn't know what to, what to do. I was very proud. I was very arrogant also and and i remember i decided to to move to canada because of the venezuelan uh, political situation i moved to canada and being here i would say that even though i i keep i kept going to church all the time i couldn't stop uh watching porn i couldn't stop being promiscuous i couldn't stop uh, sleeping with guys uh, and uh, downloading the apps, uh, gay apps, and all that stuff. At the same time, I was with, with my boyfriend at the time, I would say. And, and I remember that in 2013, I, I lose all my money. I lose everything. I lose all, all, everything I had. And I remember that I was so depressed that I didn't know what to do. So I split the relationship because it was getting too heavy and I was with my heart broken. I said, I want to, I want to follow God better. I want to, I want to, I want to follow you, Lord. And you know what I did? I stopped. I, I, I got to know a, a website about how to be gay and Christian. So Whoa. I, I accepted <laughs> myself as a gay Christian. And then even though it didn't make sense to me because what they were 
like defending was somehow crooked. I said, okay, they say Jesus tells you to love your 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 neighbor as, as you love yourself, and it happened that your neighbor is a man. So just do it. Love your neighbors as yourself, and you, it, it happens to be a man, and you are a man. So Jesus is pro homosexuality, so accepted. And then I I knew deep in my heart it was not okay. But anyways, I wanted to try. And then I, I came, I made an, another come out uh, because I, I used to come out of the closet and come in and come out and come in. And it was crazy. So I finally decided, okay, I come out of the closet. I'm going to be gay Christian. And then I started sharing with everybody I could about this new theology I was believing. But I, I didn't realize that I was I was so into the, the, the mode like, um, advertising this theology because I, I deep in me I wanted to believe it. So the more I repeated, maybe I would believe it, but I couldn't. So I didn't have peace in my heart, and you know what? My life didn't change at all. I I kept going into pornography, into everything, everything. So I remember that uh, I some months later I was traveling to to Peru. And in Peru, I met a, a couple, a, a marriage, and it was amazing because it was the first time I see, um, in both cases, uh, in her and in her husband, I saw the God's uh, presence so, so uh, touchable. It was so beautiful to see the presence of God in, in them that I remember I said, wow, Lord, I would like to know you as they know you. But I'm so lost in my scene. So just forget it, but, I, but it would be nice. So I remember when I said that, and I would say it was the, like the beginning of what happened later. I came back to Montreal. I was deeper, if, you know, if there was a deeper level of sinful life and sinful sexual disorders and disasters and whatever, I was already there. And I was going deeper and down and down and down. And I just wanted to, 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 to kill myself. I was about to jump from a building uh, many times. I remember there was a voice who tells me, go and jump while you are falling down. Ask God to forgive you. He going to forgive you. But gravity won't. And then you're gone. No. <laughs> and then I said, that, wow, you know, it's a good deal. That yeah, that was an enemy talking to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, but because I was so, my life was so dark that I just wanted to die, and 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 suicidal thoughts were like a solution, a, a, a light in, in the into the darkness. So the thing is that well, thanks God I didn't do it. And I remember I came back to Montreal. I was really far away. I the most far I could be from God. I was in in December 2014. I remember uh, at the time I was living into a family's uh, house who accepted me, who God told them, keep him here and, and, and take care of him because I'm going to do something with him. But everything what they were seeing was completely contrary <laughs> to, to what God told them. But God told them, take care of him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with him. And I remember... It was in New Year's Eve. Uh, I was in New Year's Eve, and I was there and uh, at the house uh, sharing with the with the family. And there was a friend of them. He's a Christian, uh, uh, Luigi. And we were talking about faith. We were talking about Christianity because, as you know, anyways, I have been already eleven years in church, so I know something about Christianity. I I know something about faith. But then he struck me with a, a message from God that hit me so strong. He said to me, uh, talking normally, he said to me, Carlos, do you know what's the problem with many Christians? The problem is that they have Jesus as their Savior, but they don't have it as their Lord. Hmm. Wow, my brother, you have no idea. It struck me in the face so strong, and I felt the Lord love. At that moment, I felt it was him who was talking to me, telling me the reason you are living what you are living is because I am your savior. I'm not your law. I'm not your Lord. And and then I said to him, I said to him, uh, it's not you the one who is talking. It's him. That's the reason I'm, I'm struggling. I'm living. I'm ex 
experiencing what I'm experiencing is because I am my Lord, He's not my Lord. And, and I understood that uh, revelation. And I, I understood also that me being my Lord, I was, I was a failure. You know, it, my, the fruits of my life showed that I was the worst manager I could ever have in my life. So it was easy for me to, to surrender and to say to him, you know what, I surrender. I don't want to be my, my, my Lord anymore. I just want to follow you. And I remember a few days later, I went to, to sleep with another guy. And after leaving his place, feeling as a prostitute, because honestly, I, that's the way I felt. I remember I said to him, I said, Lord, you know, it's over. I don't care anymore if you change me. I don't care anymore if you don't change me. I don't care anymore if you're going to be gay, straight, have sexual, bisexual. I, don't, I just put my life to the side. I want to follow you. Anyways, I destroy my life. So I just want to follow you. Become my Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember I did this prayer. And it was the first time ever that I said to him, I don't care if you change me or not. I just want to follow you. It was the first time. So a few days later, I was at home with the family. They were listening to some preachers. And then I, 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 I don't know why, but I felt more attracted. I felt like attracted to the message. And I wanted to hear it, but I, I wasn't used to. I went to my room and I put the, the message in, in YouTube. It was in Spanish. And I listened to this. And then I wanted to, li to, to keep listening. And I listened to preachers during seven hours you know i was not a i, I was a christian a sunday christian you know <laughs> i didn't listen to worship to preachers ever and suddenly i wanted to hear and i hear seven seven hours preacher uh, preachings so it was amazing and in that video in one of the video pastors he speaks about homosexuality as a spirit i have never heard about that i don't i know i'm sharing my my personal experience i'm not saying that everybody is possessed but it was the first time i i felt uh, i i listened to this uh, uh declaration you know saying that homosexuality could be a, a spirit and at the same time uh, he said in another message that you could align your life to god so at the end of the seven hours i decided to make a prayer and i and i i said uh, Lord, you know what? Uh, I'm going to pray now. And I, I'm going to mix what I hear in these messages. And I'm going to do it. And I pray. In the name of Jesus, I align my body to my soul. My soul to my spirit. My spirit to Holy Spirit. And I, uh, I, I renounce. No, I cast out this spirit of homosexuality that wanted to destroy my whole life. I restore the original design you made in me. And I pray for, for my wife and kids in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but it, it was crazy. I was astonished by the prayer. I said, Which, where is this prayer coming from? You know, I, I wasn't a, a prayer guy at all. I was lost, completely lost. So and immediately I remember I felt uh, like a switch in my, in my chest. And I said, like, something happened here. Something happened. Then I went to my phone, which uh, was a... Uh, a, how do you say that? A library, a pornography library of gay homo uh, porn. And then I, I started watching, and then I realized that I didn't feel any attraction. It was the first time in my life that I was seen to gay porn, and I didn't get any attraction. Wait, yes. hold on, wait a minute, one second. You're telling me that God took away your homosexual desires? Yeah, but it's not just that. I'm gonna. Be, I, I, I have a problem. I'm, I happen to be very honest, okay? So I'm going to tell you what happened after that. Mm -hmm. What happened after that is that I, I went to, to my ex-boyfriend's uh, place, the guy when, which I spent seven years, the guy I, I experienced the most uh, sex in my life, and I went to his place. Even though the relationship was over, anytime we see each other, we used to have sex. And... And I remember I went to his place because we, he always wanted to change. And I, 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 I also I wanted to change. And I went to his place just to, to share with him what just happened to me, like two days before. And when I did it, uh, I, I won't explain here why it happened or why not. I, it just happened. 
we happened to have sex that day. You know, he took me by my hand, we went to the room, it happened. But at the very moment, uh, he was, okay, um, he was penetrating me. At the very moment, I felt disgusting as ever in my life. It was the first time I felt disgusting being with a man. I have ever felt that since I was five to I was 32. I slept with more than 600 guys in my whole life. And it was the first time I was feeling that ever. And I said to him immediately, I said to him, listen, I don't belong here anymore. I don't belong to the team. The Lord did a miracle in me. What I'm doing here, this is filthy. This is sex with, you know, anal sex is with excrements. You know, what is this? This is wrong. I had a, I had a, a veil in my eyes. What is this? this is crazy. Immediately I leave the place and it was the last time I had sex, uh, anal sex with a guy because it's disgusting. I, but I couldn't see it. It's like I had a filter in my eyes. So mm-hmm. since that day, I remember I said, okay, I'm going to just fulfill myself with the word because if, 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 if it happens that it was an spirit, I don't want it to come back. So I want to fill myself with the word. And you know what happened? That uh, After a few months, he filled me so much. And he made me understand that everything I've done was forgiven. That, that, that I don't have to remember even what he doesn't remember. I understood that that my problem, and check this, my problem, I, I thought it was homosexuality, but he made me understand that my problem wasn't homosexuality. My problem was my obsession to change homosexuality. In change, it became an idol. Mm. And I didn't know. I didn't know that I came to him every single time just because I wanted him to change me, but not because I wanted him. So the day I made the prayer, I said, even if you don't change me, if you change me or not, it doesn't matter, it's just an apology. It was the day I made him lower about, about that obsession. Hmm. And that's where the Bible says, if you, if you clean yourself to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose it, for me, you're going to save it. In Matthew 16, 25. Correct. So I yeah. didn't, realize, didn't know that I was so attached to my life that I, I already lost it. But when I put it to the side just to follow him, then I found him. But I found him. I, I found my life on him. That's awesome. That's awesome. It was easy. And you know, I, I have been sharing this. And until now, there has been like 125 people that I, I have recorded that experienced the same miracle after surrendering their desire to change. Just to follow God because of who he is. Wow. And yeah. That's part of what I have experienced, but after that, he has shown me so much, my brother. I, I, I understand that I am a new creature, that my past doesn't exist, that I am born of him, that I have his seed, his genetics, he, his, his mind, that I have his spirit, that he's, he, he's one with me. And, you know, he erased everything. He erased everything. So I, I, I just keep working in, in identity. I don't fight sin. I just walk in who I am in Him. Hmm. Yeah, God is full of tender mercies and, and grace. And if He can forgive someone who slept with over 600 people, I don't even have that many Facebook friends. But if He can forgive a person like that, then, you know, He can forgive anyone. That's all, that's all great God's love is and how much He can extend His forgiveness to, towards anyone. Um, so I have a question. Do uh, you believe you, by, by the, it has been already five years from that uh, moment? Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. So I have a question. Do you believe that um, your homosexuality, your attraction to men, do you believe that came about because you were uh, sexually abused? You know, I I don't know the answer. Because it was one of my big questions. I had that question. I didn't know if it was because I was sexually abused. At the same time, 
I was a really a delicate guy. I know that I know that mannerism doesn't mean that you're gay, but I somehow was soft, you know. So I, the only thing I know is it doesn't matter if it was because I got it from from my parents or because it was in in the sexual abuse. I what I really know is that I'm a new creature. I'm, my past doesn't exist. That's what I used to say. You know, because I had so many big questions, like why God permitted me to experience that sexual abuse, why he didn't protect me, why uh, my father rejected me, why um, uh, many, many, many whys. And all the time I kept looking for them, I was, um, how do you say, that bitter inside. Mm -hmm. But it was when I really put that to the side just to focus on him, that he he gave me such a, a this life that I don't really uh, think about that um, question anymore. And and honest, I don't know, I don't know if if I could answer that. Okay, because I asked that question because um, I have noticed that uh, some people who are sexually abused receive like a unclean spirit, like a perverse spirit, and it affects affects them greatly in terms of like sexuality. You know, as they grow older. And that they need to have those spirits cast out of them. But um, I have another question. Um, actually, but I just have to tell you, there, okay. there was a spirit. I I I, I saw it. Uh, this that I told you while uh, that I was able to see another guy's eyes and immediately know he was gay and he connected with me and we I would say without even talking we went already it, we went to bed. Uh, it's what is called gaydar. Uh, so that's what I used to call a gator because it was like a gay raider. So it, it is called gator, and and I thought it was like a superpower, but you know, it happened after a moment when somebody said in front of my dad that I was that I had a, I had a gay face, and my father didn't didn't react. He didn't defend me. He didn't say nothing, and he expected me to to respond, and I didn't. So I remember I was so mad at my dad that I said. Okay, you think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gay, so I'm gonna be the most gay you ever uh, met. So after that, I remember I started like recognizing other people uh, who were gay also, and it kept with me during years. And after that encounter with God, when I surrendered and I cast out the spirit, it was gone. It doesn't exist anymore. So it was one of the things I realized immediately that I can be in front of somebody who who is uh, attracted to same same sex and I don't I don't even notice it. Well, wow, so, so God so God completely took that a desire away from you, one hundred percent. Amen. Awesome. That's that's the power of Jesus Christ right there. Amen. Now you have a, a, a your own YouTube channel on like the Spanish side of YouTube. Um, <laughs> is your is your YouTube channel the same as your your name? That your YouTube yeah, channel name. Carlos Catari. There is an English channel, but I, I need to feed it more. Only that I have so many people uh, contacting me in Spanish that I don't know how to manage it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, your YouTube so channel your YouTube perfect. channel is pretty popular. So. You know, those who are like Spanish, like primarily Spanish speakers, you can go ahead and check out his, 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 his YouTube channel. It's Carlos Catari, C-A-T-A-R-I. It has a lot of um, interesting Christian content, I think, because I you know I'm not really good in Spanish, but it seems like it has some good Christian content on there. Yeah. So um, anything else you want to share? Yeah, you know, uh, many things the Lord has... Uh share with me it has been about understanding his love for me because it was his love for me that made me surrender the day i said i said uh, that sorry the day he said to me i am your savior but i'm not your lord it was so touching because i was i would say that i was lost as 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 i could ever be or uh, in, in my life, and at that very moment where I felt so sinful, he came after me. So it was his love what what conquered me, and then because of his love, I surrendered. So for me, it's so important to help people understand God's love, because when they get 
that God loves them and that God wants them back and that God already paid all the bill, all the they've done and that he did it even before they were born because he wanted to get them back. When they understand this, uh, they surrender. So the, 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 the most important thing is not even to fight against, that's how I think, is not to fight against sin. Is not to to try to obey God. Is not to try to to um, to do something. It's honest. Is to understand He loves you first. When you understand He loves you, you love back. Mm. And and then you're gonna obey. You're gonna seek after Him. But because you know, you understand He loves you and He wants you to with Him. And also to understand that the grace of God in Jesus takes you. It takes you the way you are, the way you get to him, as no matter how lost you think you are, the grace takes you the way you are, but the grace also transforms you into a new creature. And a new creature that has nothing to see with what you have experienced. And the more you believe everything the world says about you, about, you know, for me, as it says in Colossians 1, uh, 11, um, 19 to 23, that we are that he reconciled us with him, that he already cleaned our life, that we are clean with our fault saints. The more you understand and you believe who you are in him because of what he did, the more your life is going to produce those fruits of holiness. And that's where I focus, uh, helping people understand that this real struggle is to believe right. Not to fight against sin because sin has no more power than what you think it has. In Romans 6, he said that the power of sin is, is over in our life. So the more we believe he has power, it's like we are not unbelieving what he says about sin. So the more you believe that you have his mind, you understand that those thoughts of temptations or whatever are coming to your mind are not coming from, from, from the mind of Christ that you already have. So I really focus on identity because when you're getting to, to know your identity in him, uh, you don't fight anymore. You live in what he do- he's done. All That's right. Where I, where oh. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carlos. Thank you for, for sharing that. And um, I really hope this edifies um, people who, who listen to this. And uh, I want to just close in prayer, okay? Um, Father God in heaven, uh, thank you for having Carl's to share his, his wonderful testimony that uh, glorifies you, God, that shows people that you are a loving God, you are a forgiving God, you can forgive the worst of sinners. I ask you, God in heaven, that those who listen to this will uh, receive it and will be edified by it. And um, I ask you, God in heaven, just you know, please just bless everyone who listens to this. And I I praise you, Lord God in heaven. I praise you because you are full of tender mercies. You're full of kindness. You're full of love. Yes, you are a, a, God, of, a God of judgment and wrath as well, but you are, you're also full of grace, God. And you're willing to forgive if people just repent and turn to you, turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in you.